Today is Tuesday, April the 17th, 2018, and we're in this journey of examining the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. I'm reading again the first seven verses, which state this, And seeing the multitudes, he, referring to Jesus, went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to, to him. Then he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So we're looking at the pure in heart today. We're continuing from yesterday. And we know the truth contained in the scriptures that the, in our natural man, our heart is desperately wicked and deceitful. But Jesus states in this beatitude, divine happiness belongs to those who are pure in heart. So what does it mean? What does it mean to be pure in heart? To be pure in our heart is to be clear in our heart, to be clean, to be bright, to be transparent, to be sincere. A pure heart is one that is cleansed and without defilement associated with the first commandment, that we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and spirit. The pure in heart are clean from every taint of every kind. They're free from the pollution of sin. You see, the heart is the seat of our emotions, it's the seat of our intellect and our concerns, and we need that heart to be pure, clean, clear, free from sin, abandoning all those things that have to do with the old nature and with Satan in this world. James Moffat once translated this verse, blessed are those who are not double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So the potential exists that the pure, that purity of heart is a direct result of a singleness of heart to serve the Lord. That fits with what the commandment is, doesn't it? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. <laughs> so if we're single-minded in that, the chances of us having a pure heart are higher. A great naturalist wrote one time concerning orchids. What sensitive things these are. They will turn away from a dead branch or try to secure a fresh hold if the branch on which they live is diseased. They show their distaste in an unmistakable manner by throwing out new aerial roots, feeling their way to something better. This is the sort of nature we need to move us to fasten on to the sound, the clean, and the pure. God has given us this capacity in Christ the capacity and the power to seek for those things which are above. Frankly, I would rather tell a man I had nothing to do with Christ than give him a picture of the Christian mind as something unclean. I was pheasant hunting one time with a guy and uh, his boys, and, and we were walking these cornfields in Iowa, and, and this guy starts telling me this, this joke, and it was off color. And when he was done, I didn't laugh. And he, and he said, well, wasn't it funny? I said, listen to me. Would you tell that joke to my father, a man he highly respected? And he said, no. And I said, then don't ever tell me that kind of joke either. I don't want my mind on those kinds of things. You see, the believer, the follower of Christ, he's sending out roots to that which is good. In fact, Philippians 4.8 has a great thought for us. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there is any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. In Psalms 86, 11, the psalmist writes, unite my heart to fear your name. Lord, Lord, we... We need you to give us singleness of heart that we want nothing more than what you desire. And that is pureness of heart. Let's pray together. Oh, God, <laughs> we need cleansing in our hearts. We've got secret things there and 
things that we thought about that aren't noble, they aren't just, they aren't love, they aren't a good report, and we've meditated on those. And we need to reverse that. We need your help. Cleanse our hearts, O oh God. Purify our hearts and, and strengthen us to that which is pure. Thank you for letting our roots go deeply into the pure things, the holy things, the right things, the just things. Thank you. Amen. Grace and peace to you today. Pursue purity of heart with all you've got as you follow after Jesus. God bless you.